Welcome to Living a Full Life Podcast. Join us as we explore health topics that encourage raising healthy children, living a healthy life, and living the best life possible. Now, here's your host. Hello and welcome to another podcast of Living a Full Life. I am Dr. Enrico Rochicori and we're continuing on about lean muscle mass this week. We had a great episode last week. If you didn't listen to that one, I think you should because we're going to dive into this one leading off from where we left off last time about lean muscle mass and gaining. So today's about gaining muscle mass and losing fat. Two, we're going to go through the two. You have to choose one or the other. You're either choosing to gain muscle mass through exercise or you're cha- you're changing your diet to lose weight, one or the other, okay? If you're in the weight loss category, make sure you're defined in the weight loss. And if you're in the muscle gaining category, we're going to talk about both. So please listen back to that because we dissected how many grams of protein and all those little things. And we'll touch on them in this one as well. But if you get confused, I think listening to the last podcast together is going to help you with Today, So let's talk, continue with lean muscle mass. And now we're choosing to gain muscle or lose weight. I had a microbiology teacher in a post-grad talk, and I remember him saying one thing, you cannot anabolize and catabolize at the same time. And the entire fitness industry is completely confused about that. They will argue that the entire way. They'll say, sure you can. You can work out, gain muscle, and burn fat at the same time. And my microbiology teacher strictly said, you cannot anabolize and catabolize at the same time. So I'm confused because that is true. He's absolutely right. You cannot anabolize and catabolize at the same time. You can say, well, I worked out and I lost all this weight. How is that possible? Well, you didn't gain weight. You lost weight. And you lost muscle mass with that. People forget that. They're not getting on these scales and measuring their lean muscle mass before, middle, and after to really determine that. And that's okay because some people lose 50, 60 pounds of weight. I mean, that's just so great for their health. It's, it's amazing. Even if they lost 10 pounds of lean muscle mass through all that, that is really good because the intramuscular uh, muscular fat was dissolved. A lot of good things happen with overall weight loss. So don't get me wrong on this. I just want to be very clear. If you're setting up a goal, are we gaining or are we losing? It changes the way you eat. So let's go through this. Estimate your maintenance calories. We talked about this in the last episode about times multiplying your current body weight in pounds times 14. And that should be around your maintenance caloric intake for the day to maintain your weight. So if we talked about a 150 pound person, times 14 was 2,100. And I realized I'm like, who? No one's 150 pounds. Most people are heavier. So 200. So we're going to use 200 in this episode. 200 pound male, it eats about 2,800 calories per day to maintain their weight. Okay. The argument that always comes up is like, can I eat three McDonald's? Can I eat McDonald's for breakfast, McDonald's for lunch and McDonald's for dinner and make sure it's all 2,800 calories and not gain any weight? No, because it's all crap. It's it's nutrient void. It's high in trans fats, high in sodium, and there's going to be a, a res- inflammatory response to that, and you're going to gain weight because of inflammation. So let, we're not, that's a different episode. Let's talk about that some other time. So no. So we're just talking about through the foods in your home, in your fridge. If you maintain 2,800 cal- calories, you should maintain your weight at 200 pounds. That's, and then we adjust that based on our activity, light, moderate, or very active. And you just times that number, the 2,800 times 1.2 or 1.5 for moderately active, 1.2 for lightly active. And if you can classify yourself as very active, I only know a few people who are, then you can do 1.75. And that's your maintenance caloric intake to maintain weight. Let's get into building muscle. So you got to set your protein intake. So now, and I talked about the last episode, about one gram to make one gram of protein per body weight. So a 200 pound man will eat 200 grams of protein to maintain their lean muscle mass. If you are looking to build muscle, you will go to 1.8 to 2.2 grams per kilogram per kilogram. That's about one. So you'll be eating about 200. I will go to 1.2, 1.2. So a 200 pound person can eat 240 grams of protein per day. 
Now you're increasing amino acid and protein synthesis in the body and telling lean muscle that there is plenty of protein in here and amino acid chains for you to grow. So you go to the gym, you do some micro tearing, you do some lifting, and then overnight when you get some good sleep, your body regenerates. That's And those amino acids come into play. So that's that. Then you divide the rest of your calories between carbs and fat. So with, with gaining muscle, you want mainly protein because you're working or carbohydrates because you're working out and you need to fuel the body. So I would do two, you know, about 300 to 400 grams of carbohydrates per day. I'd probably do 400 grams of carbohydrates per day and keep the calories of fat low, about 50 grams per day. For This is for a 200-pound person, and then you got to do the math, okay? So the math is 60% carbohydrate. 20% fat. And the rest is coming from protein. Does that make sense? So that's how much we want from there. So lower fat, more calories from cal- if we're working out. And of course you're working out. That's the only way to gain muscle mass. So that makes sense. Assuming a moderately active lifestyle, your calorie target could be around 4,300 4, calories. To, you know, if you're moderately active. With the protein goal of 200 grams, that leaves you with tw- about 2340, 2340, 2300 calories for carbs and fat. That translates to about 600 grams of carbs and 60 grams of fat. Does that make sense? So that's how we kind of do it. So it leaves us with you know, 200 grams of protein, 600 grams of carbohydrates, and 60 grams, maybe 55 grams of fat. That is your magic bullet to gaining lean muscle. And the emphasis I'm going to put on this is carbohydrates. You, it is very difficult to do a keto-type diet and gain lean muscle mass. It is, it is hard because you're not fueling the glycogen in the muscle. Your muscles use carbohydrates for energy. They use protein to build muscle. Very different. It's concrete and gasoline. So proteins are concrete. The wet concrete from the cement truck, that's it. At night, when you go to finally go to sleep, the cement trucks pull up and they start pouring new concrete into the muscle. And that dries overnight. And when you wake up in the morning, you wake up sore, tight as this concrete is solidifying and it builds you up stronger. That's my analogy for it. Carbohydrates is the gasoline. You worked all day, all the trucks, all the engines, all the cranes, all the forklifts used up the gas in their in their engines. And now we need the carbohydrates to refill those tanks so tomorrow we can do it again. That's the difference. So these hypo-restrictive calorie diets are not very good for exercise. So that's a warning for PSA for everybody. So these are general guidelines, and we need to be very considerate about your macros and your weight and your fat percentage. So you need to know these things. If you're in the local area, come on in, do a free Tanata body scan analysis. We'll give you that whole report. It's very cool. But you can get a lot of these from the scales. They're not highly accurate, but they're good enough. They're good enough to give you your baseline. You can have a scale in your bathroom that can do that for you. You need to know your lean muscle mass, your free lean uh, mass, your free fat mass, your body fat percentage, and your body fat. You need to know those numbers, and that's how you can assess and and move forward. Uh, Focus. Here's some tips on all this. Focus on consuming whole foods, whole foods that are unprocessed with high protein, uh, meats, fish, eggs, you know, even dairy and nuts can, can help you with that too, but be careful with the fat content there. So we lean towards uh, meats, protein shakes, proteins, egg whites, um, fish is great. Tilapia is great. Chicken's great. All those things are really great. They're high in protein, low in fat. And include complex carbohydrates, whole grains, fruits, vegetables to provide your body with the workouts that are the energy that you need for your workouts and choose healthy fats. So really, and if you listen to the last podcast, I told you about my story that I've been going, currently going through eight months through this body transformation of 24 months. And, and it's, we're going through this. I've put on a lot of lean muscle mass, which has been great through the workouts. And what I've realized is I really have to be careful with the fat. So really the fat's coming just from the meats and whatever I cook with. That I'm not adding more fat to my diet. I'm not eating avocados or coconut uh, oil or anything like that. I'm really just getting what I get from the meat, whether it's beef, chicken, fish, 
and a little bit of olive oil that I use for some cooking. And when I keep track of that in my fitness pal, it's actually pretty close to 30, 40, 50 grams of fat per day. So it's, it's enough. So it's a very low fat diet because I'm not adding stuff to it. So no cheese, no, no, nothing fatty and keeping it pretty, pretty bone dry. So, and it's been working really well. Uh, and then stay hydrated. Water is always important, but especially if you're working out, you got to be drinking 160 ounces of water per day if you're working out. So a lot of water and get enough sleep. You need seven to eight hours a night for pro- proper muscle recovery. If you don't get good sleep, you're at very, very, very high risk for injury, muscle injury. And when I help my patients that go through this stuff and I ask them these questions and they say they're they're not sleeping well or they're poor sleepers or they suffer from insomnia, I warn them, you will be in here with, with an injury and within eight weeks, they're in with some type of injury. It's always a shoulder, an elbow, or a quad or a hamstring that ends up pull, like completely pulling on them uh, because these mu- big muscle and long tendon groups are the ones that are more susceptible to, re- to injury through reoccurring activity. If you're thinking about it, you're doing you know tricep dips, three sets of 10 or four sets of 10, 40 times tricep dips or tricep extensions or bicep curls or leg extensions, the, those tendons are under stress and without the proper rest, they're not recovering. And as the weeks go by, we're just waiting for an accident to happen. So be careful with that. Uh, building muscle takes time and consistency. Uh, it's so much less volume than fat that it's hard to see the gains that you get, but you will see it through the increase in strength. Each couple weeks, you're going to notice the leg extensions. You got to increase the weight by 10 pounds or 20 pounds. And you'll just notice it was fun to watch over six months for me to go in the, the, the machines and go from halfway down the machine, you know, about 200 pounds. And then now doing like the squatting machine in the rack, I max it out at 400 pounds now. And I'm doing squats and one legged squats at 200 and two legged squats at 400. So now I got to move off the machine because I need to get to 410, 420. So I'm going to have to start using the, the, the bar. We'll see. We'll figure it out. We'll modify. So that's where we're at. So now let's pause for a second. That's gaining weight. Are we ready to talk about how to lose weight? good. I heard yes, even though no one's listened to this podcast yet because I'm recording it. So I heard lots of yeses there and that's how we're going to lose weight. So lose weight. Okay. So now for healthy weight loss, focusing solely on macros may not be the best approach. Okay. We need a comprehensive plan with nutrition, exercise or no exercise and lifestyle adjustments to create a sustainable process for success, okay? So, but here's the framework for this. We need to get into a caloric deficit. So you gotta choose. It's gonna be 500 calories is the gold standard of losing weight in a healthy manner. So, and it can be up to 1,000 calories. So that's that's a drastic calorie shock for most people to, to cut off 1,000 calories per day, but this is where we need to go. So this will help shed pounds gradually without compromising your metabolism. So you multiply your weight, let's say 200 pounds by 14, you get that 2,800 calorie and you choose whether you're going to go down to 2,300 or 1,800 calories per day. Does that make sense? 500 or you can choose 2,000 calories a day, whatever, 700, but that's where you want to go. Minimum of 500. I start everyone off at 500 and get them to work out for four weeks and just see what happens. If we're getting that half a pound of weight loss per week, that's pretty good. We may want to test six or 700 calories to see if we can get to 0.7, 0.8 pounds. But if we get one pound of of weight loss per week, we are in the sweet spot. We We do not want to go more than a deficit of that. Because if you lose more than a pound a week through exercise and eating well, you're going to start compromising lean muscle. Make sense? Okay. So protein, aim for 0.8 to 1 gram per pound. So if you're 200 pounds, 200 grams of protein, 180 to 200 grams of protein of protein per day. Carbohydrates, choose complex carbs, whole grains, fruits, vegetables. Okay. And your fat, you're going to do it from healthy stuff, avocado oil, olive oil, nuts, seeds, whatever you want, but, but keep this low. Keep this low, 50 grams for most people. If you're under 200 pounds, you know, let's say you truly are 150 pounds, you might only want to be eating 40, 35, 40 grams of fat per day. So we want to keep this as low as we can. Personalize your macros for yourself. 
I mean a dietitian, a nutritionist, a personal trainer. People can help you with this, but you need some help. And the internet's great too, but it can be very confusing. That's what this podcast is for. I'm guiding you in the right direction where at the end of this podcast, you can just take out a pencil and a paper and do the math. Times your body weight, times 14, find the basal metabolic rate, you know, your your maintenance calories, and then take minus 500. And you're like, okay, this is my total calories for the day, and I need to eat 150 grams of protein because I weigh 150 pounds. That's how we're trying to keep it simple. So exercise. If we're going to do this through exercise, regular physical activity is crucial for weight loss. The constant burning of calories is important. Aim for 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week. So that's five 30-minute workouts, right? Or three 45-minute workouts, whatever whatever you want to do. So three or four times a week, you want to do that, or, or 75 minutes a week of vigorous exercise, a HIIT program or something like that. Maybe you do 15 minutes four times a week, or you do um, 20 minutes or 25 minutes three times a week of HIIT. You can do that too. This is where a personal trainer comes into great effect. And then lifestyle adjustments, prioritize adequate sleep, manage stress, and stay hydrated through this entire protocol. These factors play a significant role in regulating your hormones and supporting your weight loss efforts. Okay, here are some safety tips. Avoid skipping meals. If you're losing weight, you can't skip meals because you're working, you know, and you're also working out can lead to overeating later what will end up happening is after workouts you may become ravenous and you'll overeat and it kind of kiboshes your whole calorie focus focus on making gradual changes to your diet and exercise routine for long-term sustainability i can't advocate for that enough and celebrate your non-scale victories don't worry about the weight celebrate consistency celebrate two consecutive weeks of doing well celebrate any changes you notice, celebrate everything in a positive way to reinforce some positive affirmation and keep you going through this journey. Losing weight is a journey. It's never a sprint. Be patient, consistent, and kind to yourself throughout the entire process. Use a balanced approach and proper support. You can achieve your weight loss goals and improve your overall health with whatever you commit to. I hope that guides you in the right direction. We do have support for this. Now, we also do a weight loss program that is contradictory to everything I just said, where we go a 1,000 calories or a little bit more deficit for people using intermittent fasting, but we omit exercise out of this. So if you want to exercise and lose weight, we're a great source for you. If you want to exercise to gain lean muscle mass, we are a great source for you. So reach out to us. And if you live in Utah or you live in California or you live in Alberta, wherever it is, we'll guide you to the right people if you want local help. Easy to find. We just know where to look. It's super easy. Or we ask two people. One person in Toronto knows the guy in Edmonton. We got it. One person in California knows the guy in Eureka. We got it. We'll get you support. Um, so that's it. So our program and we get a fast weight loss in six weeks. We'll get people losing 20, 25, 30, 35 pounds in six weeks, which is for the people that don't have time to exercise, are, are, are in chronic condition where they're like, listen, I'm losing energy. I feel horrible. I need to do something with my health. I don't know where to start. My knees hurt. We'll get those people started on a hypercaloric doctor supervised. So we, I text them every day for that one. So that's a program where you can use us anywhere in the world and hire us for that. Just contact us at info at fulllifetampa.com. Send us an email and uh, we'll respond. And we'll be like, how can we help you? And uh, we'll get it started. We can do everything with Zoom nowadays. It's super easy through there. So we're here to support you. These podcasts are informational, but I find that I'm not giving the the sources at the end. And people are like, well, what, what do I do next? Or who do I call? Well, call us. I mean, we, we were the ones that are creating this content. So we can help more people. And this, this stuff virtually can be done around the world. My wife's no joke. She does functional medicine on top of this. She takes it to the ultimate level with your health, sending you for blood work, reviewing blood work, checking hormones. Like even before you get started, people jump to me and they bypass her. They're like, I want to get started tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, let's go. And I'm that ty- I'm type of that person, but I still send them for blood work. I just do the basics. My wife is like, we're checking gut health, we're checking hormones, we're checking thyroid, we're doing all this stuff. So by the time you get started on the program with her, it might be a week or two down the road, which is okay. Most people love that. I say most people love that detail. And I'm not saying I'm cheating the system or I'm lazy. I'm just saying 
let's go. That's my life. It's just, let's go. <laughs> I need to get things done now. Uh, if I don't get them done now, I forget and I don't get them done. That's my character, but that's because my life is chaos. Three kids, multiple businesses, multiple locations, tons of doctors. It just, that's my life and I'm okay with it. I, and I've become okay with it because I've, my mantra is let's go. There's another word in the middle of let's go, but we'll keep it clean for the podcast. There you go, guys. Gaining lean muscle and losing fat. Those are the two things that we have to choose and how we health in a healthy way do this is through how we eat. You got to eat more. 90% of people I talk to don't eat enough. And they're always worried. They're like, I've, I've been, and when they calculate, they're like, man, I've only been eating 1300 calories a day for years. Like that's my average. And then like on a Friday, I'll eat 5,200 calories. Cause we went out for pizza. We ate pizza. I eat too much cheese. Like they'll just eat this high fat stuff all of a sudden with the carbs, like the worst combination of food. And you can blame the Italians for this. The worst combination of food is complex carbohydrate and fat mixed together with very little protein. That is the worst meal you could eat. Because your body's like, okay, we got the carbs for the muscle. What is all this extra stuff for? We were supposed to use the extra carbs that we fill with glycogen to store to the liver to make a little bit of fat or to fuel the fat cells. Why are we getting a, a transmission of Alfredo sauce? What's going on here? What's with all this fat? And well, that's the worst thing. Butter and toast. I mean, butter and bread. Horrible. Tastes delicious. But it's horrible, Right. Pizza, amazing, but it's horrible. Cheese and bread, right? Fat and carb together is really bad. That's why protein has to be the base of every meal. Breakfast, if you're eating breakfast, you know, eggs, cottage cheese, oatmeal. Like they got to have a staple of protein in the center of the meal surrounded with a little bit of carb and a little bit of fat. That's how every meal should be. Make sense? And our big post-workout meals are what? Protein or carbs? Carbs. After workouts, we got to replenish the, the muscles. So that's what these professionals do. You are just trying to get through life and keep healthy. And I understand that. Lots of great tips. Reach out to us if you need anything. Have a great week. Stay healthy. Stay well. And reach out to us at info at fulllifetampa.com. That's where we're located in Tampa, Florida. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Living a Full Life Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. That helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode.